Hey everybody, Tim Anderson here, aka Renfill. Welcome back. I am in the new office and I finally have time to dive into a video about The War of the World Harem, which is an upcoming animated feature film from many of the creative people who worked on Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings films. I am highly anticipating this project, unlike The Rings of Power, which I am not anticipating whatsoever. And we're going to be talking about that today. But before we dive in, if this is your first time here, it's time for the prerequisite like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to get updates for all the other stuff that I do here, which is a lot. We talk books, we talk movies, we talk shows, we talk video games. We have a Discord with a gaming community. Links are down there. I stream most mornings. And of course, we have the world of the Weave in the Void, which is this world map behind me being produced over at patreon.com forward slash wandering hermits. My brother, my wife, and I, along with the Nathan Napalm, are working on a 5th edition tabletop setting with the books coming out in June. There's also a point-and-click game that's coming out later this year. And, of course, the book chapters, which are like Dragonlands, being published twice a month all over at the Patreon page. So check all that stuff out. Join as a member here on YouTube and do all that fun stuff so that you don't miss out on anything. Let's dive in. So... I've known about this for a while since it was first announced, but the release date um, is the article that I pulled um, from February of this year um, over at Variety.com. They got the exclusive uh, Lord of the Rings, The War of the Rohirrim, which is an original anime feature from New Line Cinema and Warner Brothers Animation, is set for release in April 12th, 2024 from Warner Brothers Pictures. Um, some of this stuff, I mean, you know, we can go through this and you can read it at leisure, but basically we're talking about... Um, uh, the uh, character of Helm Hammerhand, who was the King of Rohan during the creation of Helm's Deep, which was one of the coolest set pieces that was built in the Peter Jackson's films. And it formed one of, I think it was at the time and until Game of Thrones dethroned it, I think the battle scene for the Two Towers was the biggest and longest battle scene that had ever been recorded in a film or TV show ever until Game of Thrones dethroned it some 15 or 20 years later. Um, it was amazing. The Battle of Helm's Deep is really well done, especially um, if you got to see it on the big screen. It was really cool, I, but I, I, I just think it's it's an amazing set piece, and this is all about Helm Hammerhand and the creation of that uh, amazing piece of architecture during the history and lore of the Lord of the Rings. Now, those of you who have been following along uh, for my Rings of Power rants know that I'm extremely um, uh, nervous about adaptations, especially given that Amazon's track record for ruining things like the Wheel of Power and looks like they're desecrating the second age of the Middle Earth um, with their Rings of Power adaptation. I'm nervous about things like this. I'm not nervous about this project. Here's the reason why. The DNA behind this project. War of the Rohirrim is drawing much of its creative DNA from, from Jackson's six features set in Middle-earth. So Philippa Boyens, who was part of the Oscar-winning screenwriting team, along with Fran Walsh and Peter Jackson, of course, um, she's part of this. Um, she's executive producing the film, and her daughter, Phoebe Gittins, along with writing partner Artie Papagiorgio, are penning the screenplay based on a script from Jeffrey Addison Will Matthews. That's all very cool. We've got you know, someone overseeing things who won an Oscar for her work on The Lord of the Rings. So in my mind, we have someone who understands the creative process and has already shown her passion and dedication to Tolkien and her ability to produce something really, really cool and that respects the lore of the books and, and does its best to adapt without injecting modern wokeness into the into the scene but more importantly for me i as much as i'm i'm, I'm really happy that we have a really good writing team this is the part that that is more important to me because visually we're getting an animated feature which means it's a different medium than the peter jackson film so as much as we all love the look and feel of peter jackson's film it was all physical with some cgi now in this case We've got, from a visual perspective, we have Richard Taylor, who won Oscars for makeup and visual effects for Lord of the Rings. He was also, you know, he's one of the creators and head of Weta Workshops 
and what a digital, so on and so forth, um, behind all of the costumes and everything else and all the miniatures and bigatures and everything that was created for the films. He's on board as visual, uh, from a visual perspective. And Alan Lee, um, along with John Howe, who both worked on the Peter Jackson films, are back again on this project working in a creative capacity as sort of art directors and art leads. Now, the team that's producing this uh, in terms of doing the animations, we've got this company called Sola Digital, um, who have done some really cool projects over the years. Um, one of my favorites is the Blade Runner Black Lotus, but they've also done um, Ghost in the Shell, Starship Troopers Invasions. There's a whole bunch of projects here, Evangelion and other Impact. Um, really cool stuff here that you can look at. They've got... Um, a great website that you can dive into. I'm going to have links to all this stuff down below if you want to check all this stuff out. So for me, I think that um, this is the perfect storm. If you're going to go out and create a animated feature about the Lord of the Rings, whether it's about the, you know, the actual Lord of the Rings books or doing an adaptation of other bits and pieces, which is what they're doing here, this is the perfect team to do it. Now, obviously there is the hesitation of looking at the rings of power and what they did in terms of, well, we only have the rights to this, that, and this, and we're going to pull specific little, little details out because we, we don't really know all the details about that, but we have little clues and things and we're going to, we're going to take that little droplet and expand upon it. The reason I'm nervous about it from the rings of power perspective is because they're trying to take the, 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 appendices which are a tiny section of the overall lord of the rings and hobbit books and make that into five seasons worth of show that's not happening here we're dealing with a feature film that is very much about one singular moment in history the character of helm hammerhand and the creation of helm's deep so it's the war of the rohirrim um, which is in my mind it's something that is very very confined to a specific aspect of Lord of the Rings, and we're not trying to adapt a ton of content. God, Helm's Deep was so cool. Um, yeah, look at these maps. I mean, I'm always going to geek out when we get into um, stuff about this. Um, it said, Helm's Deep is based on Cheddar Gorge, a limestone gorge 400 feet deep in the Mendip Hills with a large cave complex that Tolkien visited on his honeymoon in 1916 and revisited in 1940, in which he acknowledged as the original of the glittering caves of Algorond at the head of Helm's Deep behind the fortress. There's some really cool stuff here. Um, I am going to be linking to all of this stuff below, as I mentioned. You can check out the IMDb page and look at the stuff that's behind this. Um, we're getting voice cast <clears throat> announcement very soon. I believe the wiki says dun 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 dun, dun. First look at the concept. Of, where did the announcement here? Yeah. Voice casting had begun at the time of its announcement in June 2020. But announcements were expected soon after February 2022. We're at the end of March right now, 2022. We still have not seen any announcements in terms of voice cast. But it is coming down the pipeline. Um, so I can't wait to see this come to fruition. I can't to see wait to see who we get for voice cast. I'll be interested to see if they're going to be trying to get... Um, famous actors or if they're going to take the route that they did with the Peter Jackson films and cast unknowns who just happen to have really good talent remains to be seen. In any case, I'm extremely excited about this. I would love to know what you all think. Let's have a discussion. Drop your comments down below. Let me know if you're looking forward to this or if like with Rings of Power, you are extremely trepidatious and you're sort of waiting to see because you're nervous about anybody adapting anything else. Love to hear your thoughts. Let's talk about it. If you like this video, don't forget to like it. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, all of those are great things to do. Don't forget, I stream every single morning here on YouTube Central Time. We also have a gaming community that plays Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturday nights, as well as Saturday and Sunday mornings. We're currently playing Lord of the Rings Online together. Links to the Discord are down below. And if you want to support the channel, you can join as a member, or you can head over to the Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash wandering hermits, where my brother, my wife, and I are working on the world of the Weave of the Void, along with Nathan Napalm doing character art for us. The 5th edition tabletop books are due out in June. The Point and Click Adventure Game is due out later this year. You can download the free demo today. And you can also read the chapters of the book as they're published twice a month over on Patreon. So hopefully we'll see you over there. Hopefully we'll see you in Discord. And we'll definitely see you in the next video here on YouTube. Thanks, everybody. Until next time.